Okay, welcome back. In this video, we're going to make the compliance drawing for our F1 car. So previously we made an assembly and here it is here. You can see that adding this block on to make the manufacturing file has actually ruined it temporarily. So if we come back to our part studio, right click and suppress our two new extrusions, we will restore the geometry back to how it's meant to be and we are ready to continue. And now I'm going to go to the plus and go to create drawing. Okay, at this point we want to go to custom template and we want to leave it on ISO, but we want to set it to A3 with a period, third angle projection and everything else we can leave. The drawing will be created. We'll have a new tab down the bottom. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to insert our assembly. So we'll switch to assemblies and we'll click on assembly one. And automatically it's realized that a scale of one to two is what we need to fit it onto the page. So I'm going to click and then it's inviting me to place additional views. Now every other view I want to place, I need to click on the original view as a reference and then drag up or down or left or right and it will place the additional views. I would recommend having five views. There's no need to have both sides of the car because the car is most likely symmetrical. Okay, now we can unclick off here and spend just a little bit of time moving our views to make sure we have enough room for dimensions. You'll notice that when you click and drag them around that the other views will update. For instance, if I lift this one up a little bit, the other views move to keep everything perfectly aligned as per third angle projection. I'm going to place one more view with the insert view button and I'm going to click an isometric view. And I might actually put this one down in the corner, away from everything else. So dimensioning is very similar to when we do it in sketches. And what I would recommend is working through the rules one by one. So I'm going to do the overall length of the car. So I zoom in, click my point. That should be the widest point of the car. Click to place it. And now, very importantly, we want to add the rule name above each dimension. So overall length of the car is rule T3.7. Hitting enter will add an additional line, which you don't want. So after you've typed it in, you can simply click off and that dimension is complete. Most of the time, the dimensions are really straightforward when they go in. But this one here, when we do the clearance above the track, will be a good example of when things don't quite go as we expect. So I click the bottom of the car, and now I click the circle, but you can see that it's actually dimensioning to the middle of the circle. So if I leave the dimensioning tool, click on my dimension, all of the spots that I can change have become highlighted. So I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to actually snap it down to the bottom of the wheel. And if I need to, I can move this one to the other side or in or out to tidy it up. And you can see now I've got my track clearance. Double click on this to edit it later on. And track clearance is T3.10. Zoom out, make sure it's tidy enough. And that's looking great. Okay, one thing we need to do is label the virtual cargo. I'm actually going to right click on the underside view and I'm going to say show hidden lines. This should reveal amongst other things my virtual cargo. You can see that it fits nicely in the car here. And we should label that so we don't lose points. And I'm going to use the note with leader tool. I can click anywhere on the virtual cargo and then bring my arrow down the bottom and the rule is T4.6 
Vecho Kagar. And I've satisfied that. One other thing we can do to save time is something like these wheel gaps here, which is a minimum of one, but I don't want a dimension here, here, and here for every wheel. So instead, I'm going to go to dimension, click my two gaps, and then I'm going to put in the rule T7.9, and I'm going to type in the word typical on the next line, and that tells the person reading the drawing that every gap for the wheel around the car is also set to two millimeters. Make sure that it actually is. It would be very obvious if you have any variation in that rule. If we're naming views and things like that, we use the normal note tool. And we simply type in what we want. We can also do regular things like copying and pasting. And now come back and double click to edit. All of our usual formatting tools are here. So for instance, I might want to have this centered. And of course I can move it and you'll find there's some degree of snapping. You might find that you don't want a lot of these things. This is, for instance, is tolerances. So I'm going to delete these ones just to save a bit of room. I'm going to edit this one. And set it to be center justified. And then I'm going to move it down to here. Click and move this down to a much neater position. If you're finding things that aren't snapping, you need to click on it separately and then drag it. We can see it's snapping there. Same with this side. And now this one up here. Snap that back down. Keep it really neat. If I need to draw any additional lines, we have a line tool here. We also have things like two point center line, line to line center line. Make sure you fill out all of these things here. You should probably have your team name, compliance drawing, and maybe the competition you're at. You can fill out the name of your designer, and maybe you get your design engineer to check it and your team manager to approve it. Once again, there's probably too many lines here. Where our material is balsa and or foam, and our finish is spray painted. It will take a while to go through and meticulously dimension everything from the rules, but if you want to get a good engineering score, you more or less can't avoid doing this. Okay, one last thing I've decided I'd like to do is to set up a section view. So I'm actually going to move these over to create space. This might be a little bit tight once the drawing is completely dimensioned. What I've showed you here is a way to get started. It's by no means a complete drawing. So I've clicked on the section view button and I'm going to click exactly halfway. The arrow show me. That I have AA and the arrows point as if I was looking from this way. Therefore the virtual cargo is in the middle and this might be an excellent second time to label the virtual cargo just so they can see where it's sitting vertically as well as horizontally in the car. So I use my note with leader again and the rule once again was T4.6 You can experiment with the different views by right clicking and seeing the various settings so quite a popular one to do is to show hidden lines. You can turn that on and off. However, it could become too messy to understand what's happening. A popular one to do is also for our isometric view, show shaded view, which will give all of the color representation that you included in your assembly. Okay, one important thing to note is that you can go back and make changes 
at any time back in the parts studio or in the assembly. You can edit whatever you want, but after you do that, the drawing will not automatically update, but it is very simple to do. So all you need to do after you've made a change is come up and click this yellow button here, update from this workspace. It will spin for a few seconds and then everything will be up to date. This is just a very shallow example of what needs to be done. Really all of the views should be labeled, all of the dimensions for the rules should be in. And I would recommend coming up and adding additional sheets to do things like wheels, front wings, rear wings, simply by themselves to make sure it's really clear. You might also consider doing the body just by itself to dimension all of those. Trying to fit all of the dimensions into this one drawing is going to become very crowded. So that is my strong recommendation. Okay, there's further things that we can do to tidy up the drawing. For instance, we don't need two decimal places here. And I would argue this text is a little bit close to the leader line and things like that. So these settings are accessed by coming up to properties. And then if we change our length precision, it will update everything in the drawing to have as many or as little as you set it to. Now something where it's already a round number, it won't affect it. But I'm going to go to one decimal place for everything here. Something like text gap. Up or down, you can see is moving this above. Geometry gap. If I insert that, that increases the small gap here. Extension past the line. Similar type of thing. You can play with all of these here. You can change your units, whatever else you need to, and simply close once you're finished playing with that. There's one job that we can't do in Onshape. So to achieve that, we actually have to download a PDF of this drawing. So we come down, right click and go to export. And we want a PDF. And we click export. And we're ready to edit in another program. So I've actually opened up the PDF in Illustrator and we can see already it looks a lot, lot neater than it did before. Last thing we need to do is to shade the wing surfaces, whatever we're counting as our wings, we're meant to shade them. So I'm going to come to a new layer and that should be as simple as using things like the rectangle tool to snap to what's already here. And then all we need to do is to set the fill to a color of our choice. I'm going to go 100% yellow. And then under transparency, I'm going to set it to maybe something like 50%. Actually going to remove the outline for that. Once I've got one, I can copy it on the other side and I'll have my wing shaded. It won't take very long at all. Resave as a PDF and your drawing will be complete.